Thank you for coming. My name is Isabel French, and I'm part of the trade team at the Consulate in Toronto. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the Canadian market, some of the opportunities for UK companies, and just touch briefly on CETA, which is the Canadian Economic Trade Agreement, just um, in negotiations at the moment. I'm part of our locally engaged staff, native Torontonian. There aren't very many of us. But I've lived and worked in the UK for a number of years. So I've got a good idea of business on both sides of the pond. My husband, a Londoner, returned to the UK at the start of the National Lottery. We were living in Canada at the time, so we packed up the children, came and settled in Tring, Hertfordshire. Children went to the local school. I, once I sorted out my driving, went to work for Manpower, which was one of the best things I did while I was here. I worked for some wonderful companies, met some terrific people, learned a lot about business. My retail past includes owning and operating my own card store. So, this is Canada. Second largest country in the world with six time zones. Halifax on the East Coast is closer to London than it is to Vancouver on our West Coast. Our population stands at 35 million, slightly a little over half that of the UK. Area-wise, we're about 9 million square kilometers. The UK is 241,000 square kilometers. So in other words, we are 38 times the size of the UK with a little over half the population. You could put the UK in a quarter of the province of Ontario. I'm just telling you this so you have a, an awareness of the size of the country. Most of the population is located within a 200 mile band of the US border. About 80% of the population are in our urban centers, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, Vancouver. We're mostly centered in the central provinces of Ontario and Quebec, over 50% of the population, another 25% in the western provinces of Alberta and British Columbia. Ottawa is our capital, there are two official languages, French and English, although there are over 100 unofficial languages spoken in the country. Our largest growing segment of our population is Chinese and South Asian. We're a member of the Commonwealth, the G8, the G20. The Queen is still our head of state and still on our money, but now we have the new polymer bills. You'll be seeing those in the UK in 2016. I think probably a little bit of Mark Carney's influence. So UK Trade and Investment provides assistance through our consulates in Toronto, Ottawa, Calgary, Vancouver, and Montreal. Our coverage of the market is based on sector and geographic differences. Trade officers are hired locally, so we can provide regional office and a perspective on the market. We work directly with UK companies as well as through international trade advisors and our compatriots in Scottish development, Northern Ireland and Wales. The Canada-UK relationship is an important one, originally based on historical, cultural and political links, but it's since evolved. We're a safe, developed market using the same legal and banking system as the UK. The UK brand is known and well recognized. A few numbers. In 2012, the UK exported $9 billion of goods and services to Canada, and Canada exported $18 billion to the UK. The UK is Canada's number one trading partner in Europe and their third partner overall after the USA and Japan. It's estimated that CETA will boost bilateral trade between Canada and the EU by 20%. Over 700 companies have set up business in Canada in the form of subsidiaries, partnerships, and via importer and agency agreements. I thought it was worth highlighting a few points about market entry. These are some of the things that Canadian companies point out to us as to why business for UK companies hasn't gone as they expected. In most cases, Canada isn't a testing ground for new products. It's a fast, sophisticated country, very in tune with the USA and quite demanding in the way business is conducted. Delay means a loss of revenue. Inquiries must be count with dealt with promptly. Companies will not want to hear there was a time difference. We deal with six different time zones all the time. 
In-market representatives and end users will want to see an established track record before you enter the market, not necessarily international sales, but that you do have volume of sales. Is there competition for your product? Is it manageable? Is it a deterrent? Most likely your competition will be home-based or from America. It's also important to point out what distinguishing features your product has that aren't already in the market. We're not short of consumer goods, but we're always looking for something edgy and innov innovative. And, or your product may be more attractive in terms of design, price point. Another thing to consider is regulatory measures. These should be addressed early on before you're ready to export. Uh, for one example, Canada is a bilingual country, so all our packaging and labeling under the Consumer Packaging and Labeling Act must be in French and English. Products like cosmetics require approval from Health Canada. Products that have any kind of electrical component, uh, perhaps a kitchen gadget, lighting, require certification by Canada Standards Association. We had an interesting inquiry not too long ago about a baby's teething ring, just an example of regulations. The product met numerous international standards. It was sold in Europe. They wanted to bring it to Canada, so I spoke to Health Canada, who informed me that the ASTM and EN standards were not sufficient. It had to meet Canadian regulations. Uh, part of the problem was because the teething ring was filled with a gel, so they were concerned about um, any microorganisms in the gel. The other part was it was considered a toy, so it had to meet toy regulations for flammability, mechanical failure, such as small components. It was quite an eye-opener to me that this product that sold in Europe needed to meet so many more regulations. Your best route to market depends on what you're bringing in. If you have um, a large quantity, a large product range, it might be best via an importer distributor. The larger ones all have showrooms. They probably have provincial sales representation across the country. If your product is more a higher end product, perhaps in limited quantity, you may wish to use an agent who will not take control of the stock. They will just make the sales or you may be able to sell direct to a retailer, possibly via an exclusive arrangement. Once you've decided to look at Canada as a market, you're going to be, have to be committed to supporting this market. That may mean that suppliers will want you to come and visit the market. They may wish you to be able to provide some promotional or marketing support. Um, one other point, uh, do you have the capacity to fulfill those orders? There's not much point in winning a big order in Canada only to discover you don't have sufficient stock on hand or the manufacturing capacity to meet your distributor's requirement. Just a couple of examples of branding. I think this is really important. It's a good way to promote your product in the Canadian market. We have a large expat population and the UK brand is recognized for quality. So unless you've got your own internationally recognized brand, maybe like Jamie Oliver is now with all his kitchen products and his designer dishes, I would suggest you put a flag or made in Canada on your packaging, on your label, these were a couple of examples. The tea brewing system I came across in Longo's, which is one of our supermarkets. They had a very big end of aisle display. There were loads of people stopping to have a look. I've also seen this product in specialty tea shops, and hopefully you can see the flag on the top of their box. And the other was from Denby. They had a very nice display in the Bay, which is one of our department stores, a bit like Marks and Spencer's. So my advice is, if you can, make use of your brand. So there's a lot of things UK Trade and Investment can help you with. Um, some of the things we do are organize programs for visitors, both individually or as part of a mission. 
Other things we do are organize trade information stands. Um, similar to what goes on at Spring Fair, we have done this on numerous occasions. We've had missions come over. We've taken a booth at the Toronto Gift Fair. It's been a great way for companies to display their product, get some feedback, even some orders. We help companies already established in the market. We do specific events, including receptions at official residences. And we bring Canadian buyers to the UK. Um, this week, we have two buyers from Canada. One Perfume Passion is looking for fragrances and cosmetics. The other port style is looking for home decor items. So you can make, an, if it fits your product lines, make an appointment with UK Trade and Investment. Two major issues affecting the Canadian consumer base are the fact that our population is changing. We are much more ethnically diverse now and the population is becoming older. Space saving, time saving items are in. Canadians are well educated, knowledgeable about what they buy, they travel. They're looking for durable, reliable products. But they're quite demanding and price conscious as well. Canada, like the UK, has an aging population, many senior citizens. The majority have money to spend, but they're not necessarily spending that money on themselves. They've got most of what they want. They're spending it on their children and their grandchildren. They're not looking for the old country roses that used to be so popular. They're looking for what their children want, something a bit more designer and upbeat. Many of our city dwellers are living in condos. So we now know there's a lack of living space, very little storage space. The dining living area is now doubling as the home office and the playroom. So again, that focuses on monthly functional pieces. There's little room for the knickknacks that our parents' generation collected. Today's seniors buy travel items, upscale toys, healthcare products, hospitality gifts, and baby gifts for those grandchildren. So if you're looking at North America for the first time, our low population can be to your advantage. You're going to have smaller orders and much more manageable sectors. It's a great jumping off point for North America. Single person households account for approximately 25% of residents. And again, the focus is on careers and recreation. They're again looking for those labor saving, time saving devices. Online shopping is growing. Surprise, a third of the boomer generation shop online. And what's driving their purchases is their free time. Home decor items currently outsell all other gift giftware sectors, probably due to downsizing and makeover programs. Also keep in mind we have regional differences. Um, Central Ontario, a bit more business-like. The West Coast is very relaxed in their perspective. Quebec has a very European flavor to it. Outdoor areas, gardens are being turned into an extra room with luxurious seating and cooking areas. Bathrooms are being turned into personal spas with luxury personal care items, dramatic decor, even entertainment centers. We celebrate all the special occasions from birthdays and retirements to seasonal holidays, unique events. We celebrate them all. Mother's Day, which is May in Canada, as opposed to Mothering Sunday in March in the UK, is the number one gift-giving day of the year, followed by Valentine's and Christmas, although most sales are recorded for Christmas. If you're not already registered for UK trade and investment business opportunities, I would suggest you look into it. You can find it on the UKTI website. Companies will post their re will ask UK Trade and Investment to post their requirements for a specific product or service. Um, an example is one company who was searching for cosmetics. That company is now here as a buyer. They receive numerous responses from UK companies, and they're speaking with them now. It's a good opportunity. Um, the other thing to look for on that UK Trade and Investment website is webinars. We have already done two on doing business in Canada. There is a third to come. I didn't have the date before I left to come here, but they're very informative. 
um, arranged by us, but with local companies speaking about tax situations, about distribution, lots of things you would want to know. I suppose our only really big gift show, trade show in Canada is the Toronto Gift Fair. Now we also have one in Alberta and Montreal. We um, have some smaller shows, the Interior Design Show, which is soon to be part of the Construct Canada Show. And we have a mode accessories show, which is fashions accessories for women. Many Canadian companies can be found buying or exhibiting at the larger USA and European shows. I was at the gift fair last week, it was much smaller than here, I'm a bit overwhelmed by the size. But lots of, lots of pastel colors this year, tangerines, turquoise, lots of outdoor pieces, home decor items, more kitchen items and you could shake a stick at. So just a little mention on CETA because I think that will be important. Maybe not so much for the giftware sector, possibly impacting China goods, um, but more for the food and drink, perhaps if you're doing gift hampers or something of that nature. Um, the discussions have been ongoing for four years and uh, there was an agreement reached last October. It should be signed in the next 18 to 24 months. It's estimated CETA will generate another 1.3 billion boost to the British economy and facilitate two-way trade. It will eliminate most duties, including dairy quotas, seafood barriers, relax regulations on meat imports, though not beef, among a number of other things. There's still a lot of work to be done, but Biz and the other UK stakeholders are working towards getting the best deal they can for UK companies. In the coming months, UK Trade and Investment Canada will host a series of events in the UK promoting sector opportunities that will open up once the CETA agreement is signed. So watch for upcoming details. So in summary, Canada could be a good fit for your company. Past links between Canada and the UK mean there's already brand knowledge, which I said to build on. Our teams in Canada are ready and willing to help you. So look at doing business with Canada. I hope that's given you a bit of an overview. Thank you. Merci.